Hey, this is David with Haggerty in our DIY series. Today I'm gonna to walk you through chasing ID threads and cleaning up OD threads with a thread file. Let's say you have this old block and as you're going through the restoration process or the rebuild process of it, one of the things you wanna do is, is chase all the threads. Now, you can certainly use a tap and die uh, to chase threads. However, you do run the risk that you're cutting them a little bigger than what you need or so on and so forth. So like in this case, you just need to pull rust out of it or clean them. Um, and it's very evident on the ones on here on the back. They have grease stuffed into them from years of sitting and so on and so forth. And you need to, to go through and chase them in some manner. That is where these I don't want to call them a tap, they're a thread chaser. Um, they're the same size as a thread and they have these little reliefs cut in here. And what you do is you take and spin them in and spin them out and it grabs the dirt. You can see there's some on this one already. Some grease or grime, or if there's any little imperfection in the thread, it'll take that out. Now, you could also potentially make your own with a bolt and cut these grooves in with a die grinder. Uh, but these kits are readily available and they come with a nice uh, big heavy hex on the end of them that can be driven by a socket. So, here's how they're used. Just simply thread them in. And if you get to the point where you need a you know, socket to turn them, like right there. And you're chasing the bottom into that hole. Why it's important on, for instance, on head studs is when you run your torque value to torque and lock down your head onto the block, you need to have a good clean thread, otherwise your torque value is skewed. But now on the bottom side, let me roll this block over. I have a really nasty one here and actually the, a bolt will not thread into it at all. So it's not just a simple cleanup, it's actually going to have to clean the thread uh, metal wise and then also the gunk out of it. Nope. So this is a perfect example of I'm not going to get a very good torque value with all the uh, grime and stuff that's in this thread and there's also a little bit of a catch on the thread itself. So as I go through and I put a good torque value to that um, the main cap will not see the actual, I'll see the torque of the thread, but not the clamp load that I'm trying to achieve. All right, so I've already went through that bad spot in the thread and I could feel it and, and it, it come through. Now you can see all the grime and rust and grease getting pushed out of the hole. This happens to be a through hole, so we can really see it real, really well. And there we have a big gob of nasty. Now with a clean thread, now I can go through and I can assemble this and I will get a good torque value that equates to that clamp load that's necessary to hold the main cap onto the block. The last one I'm going to show you is, is cleaning up an OD thread with the thread files. And for that, I'm going to utilize one of these back bolts. So let's tip this back up. If you have a OD thread, like you would have on a bolt, or more likely, because quite frankly, if this bolt was bad, you would just throw it away and get another one. But let's say it's on something that you need to repair because the replacement is not very... Uh, available. Let's say this pinion thread was bad. Obviously finding the replacement for this would be relatively expensive. So these in comparison to these thread files. So all you do is you come in and you match up to find what size that thread is. And then you simply find the spot that's bad and you just and you literally just file it, right? You know, you can go around it like this, you can spin the part, whatever works best. The idea is that you can save the thread on a part that's more expensive. What I'm going to show you though is how it functions on this um, grade 8 bolt as a for instance. Um, now granted, I'm not trying to say save a dollar bolt. 
What I'm saying is if you have a more expensive part, you can save the thread on that. Likewise with these thread chasers. These bolts, holes, have already been chased with the ID chaser, okay? But here is my bolt that's to thread in. And of course, it stops there because I have visible damage to the thread. Now that is where the thread file will come in. I can repair this thread. It will go in, it'll have plenty of thread to still torque the value and everything will be good. All right, so here's the damage, visible damage on our thread. There's about four thread uh, crests that are, are peeled over and it's stopping it from threading into the block. So here's my 14 uh, thread sprints side of the file. I'm gonna simply take and overlap it. Only putting pressure going forward. I'm keeping the file in contact at all times so I don't jump. Okay, that looks pretty good. So <clears throat> by running the file over it, I can feel that that hump is off on all those threads. And by overlapping it, I'm using a good thread as somewhat of a guide. Okay, so now let's take this and see how well it goes into the block. Okay, there we go. Hope this DIY video was helpful, gave you a little insight on cleaning up some threads, but mainly click and subscribe, and then of course get out in the shop, get some work done, and then go enjoy the ride. See ya.